This morning, one of the members in our private group, uh, a private Facebook group, uh, posted a comment about a relationship that she's in with a man for over five years. And when they've talked about taking the relationship to the next level about being serious, he intimates that he wants some sort of partnership when his children are out of the home and her children out of the, her home. They don't live together. And so she found herself in a situation where she needed his help and support regarding her daughter having a, a problem with her car. And he reached, she reached out and asked for support from him. And his response was no. In fact, he laughed at her. Now, that's certainly a very unsettling thing for a person to do, to claim he claims he wants partnership within in the future, and yet in the present, he's not very serious about being a partner with her. So I want to explore the strong signs a man has when he's serious about you, and I don't want you to miss out on these. Now, it's interesting. We have to kind of remember that dating is a vetting process. It's a process to determine, is this person right for me? Is this person, um, you know, how do I get to know this person? That's the, the dating is a vetting process. Now, the challenge within the vetting process is oftentimes attraction or attachment trumps good judgment. Attraction or attachment trumps good judgment, or worse, when you feel a sense of attraction or attachment to someone, there might be a nagging issue in the relationship, and many people just hope with time that that issue will resolve itself without addressing it. So in the case of what's happened with this person, I think it's hugely important to address this issue because that doesn't demonstrate partnership on his part. So I want to share with you something I watched on Netflix recently. It's called, the show is called The Third Longest Date Ever. And it shares the story of two young people. I think she's 29 and he's 31. And I'll explain in a moment how this relates to our topic today. But they're two people that met just prior to COVID on a dating app, Hinge, okay? And they had a first date, was kind of nice, but he didn't kiss her. And on the second date was kind of nice and he did kiss her. And for the third date, he said, I'd like to take you to Costa Rica. Now it was an impromptu thing that most people would say no to, but she has an adventurous spirit and she seemed to think he was a good guy. By the way, I want you to know this story has a happy ending, okay? But that's certainly taking a risk on her part. Well, it turns out they flew to Costa Rica days before the world shut down during COVID. And it turns out that they had to spend 78 days together before they came back home. And during this period of time, they went through a lot of calamities together, a lot of frustrations together, not about each other, but there was circumstances where the hotel kicked them out and then they had to find Airbnbs and they traveled around Costa Rica finding places to live and they were dealing with trying to get air travel back. So there was, oh, and he was an influencer or he is an influencer and he recorded all this. That's what makes the show. By the way, this came out on Netflix just uh, some weeks ago. So I highly recommend checking it out. Now, during the course of the converse, uh, during the course of the show, she kept sharing how she was concerned of getting too attached to this person because what would happen if he wasn't serious when they got home? And certainly he didn't barely knew this person, so he didn't know how serious he was about her. What happened, though, was in this incubator, this incubator of these 78 days together, they became very attached to one another, but they also had to navigate the challenges of being with another human being. And in that period of time, they got to know each other. Now, uh, there was physical intimacy in this uh, container, so that was certainly a part of it. But by the end of the show, where she was worried that the minute they got home, would he bail on her, it turns out that they actually began forming a relationship and they eventually moved in together. Okay, why am I talking about this? Because our current dating 
experience, our current dating experience is a very long drawn out version of spending time together. And sadly, many people don't spend a significant enough time together in a short period of time to truly get to know another human being. That's right, very few people spend enough time, to, well, very few couples in the dating process spend a significant amount of time together in a relatively short period of time. Because these days, many people are in relationships where they, they spend more time on their cell phone texting one another than they do spending face-to-face -face time together. And for those that know my rhetoric, I say it takes about 100 hours of face-to-face -face time just to build the first layer of trust. And Jay Shetty says it takes about 40 hours to just begin to get to know someone, and it takes 200 hours of face-to-face -face time to build a friendship with someone. So when this face-to-face -face time is spread out over a long, long period of time, in the case I shared with you about the member in the group, I suspect they don't live near each other. They spend concentrated time together and then they go back to their respective lives. So the time together they spend is a bubble, oftentimes sexually oriented and not actually beginning the deep roots of trust to sustain a serious relationship. So here are a couple things I want you to pay attention to in the early stages. And then when I'm gonna share with you the three strong signs, he's serious about you. So, um, oh, I, I wrote something down though. I wanna share something with everyone. Midlife dating requires import, you have to consider the important things. How long has a person been single and do they have residue from their past? How long has a person been single and do they have a residue from their past? What I mean to say is people that are going through a contentious divorce in the moment haven't resolved, they probably have residue from their past. If someone ended a relationship with someone recently, they have residue from their past. In addition, you have to look at where this person at is in their status of their life. Is the ground underneath them solid or are they going through some level of chaos? And more importantly, you have to recognize that for those of us in midlife, we all come to the table with baggage now, I don't like the word baggage, I like the word luggage. But in this luggage, it, it affects all the moving parts to a healthy, happy relationship. In the case of the couple on the third longest date, they were young. They didn't have children, they didn't have elderly parents. He wasn't dealing with ED, um, you know, he wasn't dealing with uh, folks in assisted living facilities. He wasn't dealing with menopause and or she wasn't dealing with menopause, although she was, there was a pregnancy scare between the two of them because she couldn't get her birth control while she was, or she was, uh, she had to find birth control while she was in this other country. But my point is for those of us in midlife, we come to the table with a lot of luggage and this luggage oftentimes don't, doesn't make it easy to integrate into each other's lives. Excuse me for slurping. So we have to take all these things into consideration. Now I shared with you in the early stage of dating, you have to pay attention to a couple clues. First and foremost, he's not into you. Okay, after meeting you or after having sex with you, does he become flaky? Now I know that's very obvious, but this seems to be a habitual narrative we hear in the dating marketplace that people become very flaky um, right after meeting you or after having sex with you. This is why I'm a big proponent of, of vetting another person. Now vetting is what I teach in my private coaching. By the way, there's a link right here to schedule a discovery call with me. There's a link below as well in the description. My whole coaching program is designed to teach you what questions you should be asking in the early stages of dating based on your personality to determine, is this person compatible with you? Do you share the same values? Are your lifestyles blendable? And more importantly, does he have the emotional maturity to lean into a healthy, happy relationship? Okay, another sign that you have to pay attention to, is he capable of a relationship? Is he capable of a relationship? Now, 
if I said this earlier, if his life is in chaos, if he's going through a contentious divorce, if he has issues going on at work, if he has issues with his children, the ground underneath him might not be solid enough to lean into a healthy, happy relationship. He might want companionship. He want, might want connection. He might want sex on an occasional basis, but he's not capable of something deeper, something more solid. You have to pay attention to these signs because he might want the, you get the, the pieces of a relationship, but not the totality of some level of partnership in a relationship. And then you have to recognize that this sign is humans have issues. Most humans have unresolved or unhealed childhood wounds and traumas or unresolved adult traumas. That's right. Unresolved, unhealed. See, folks that have never done therapy oftentimes bring their problems from their past relationships. And by the way, when I say therapy, I mean personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. By the way, if you're not familiar, I wrote a book all about that called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. There's a link below. It's the recognition that our baggage isn't just the physical, our luggage, excuse me, isn't just the physical aspects of our lives, it's the emotional aspects of our lives. And sadly, very a lot of men and women have traumas from their past, mostly in the area of abandonment, not feeling loved, not feeling good enough. And guess what? Dating and relationships trigger this like nobody's business. I want you to hear this. Dating and relationships trigger this like nobody's business. And so many men are reluctant to get serious with you if they haven't done some level of work in their past to heal. Maybe it's a contentious divorce. Maybe there's issues, uh, yeah, childhood wounds that caused him to uh, become an avoidant attachment style. And if you're not familiar with avoidant attachment style, I highly recommend checking out the book, Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. Check out this book. By the way, there's a link to all the books I recommend below. Because your job in the early stages is to be a detective. And then when you're in a relationship, I want you to pay attention to these three significant signs that he's serious about you. First and foremost, he makes you a priority. He makes you a priority. I mean, I know that seems rather obvious, but the reality is, is these days, I see so many women in these casual relationships where a guy makes you a, you know, makes you a priority at his beck and call. In other words, at his time frame and not your time frame. You know, once I, I recognized that, here's a picture of Marie and I there. Once I recognized that this was someone very early on that I wanted to explore a relationship with, I made her a priority. I had other priorities in my life. I certainly had my son. I had my business. But at the same time, I made her a priority. See, when you, now here's the tricky part. This is the hardest part of all in the dating process is, you know, when a man is ready to settle down, it's with a woman who is unique to him. She's got something called it factor, something unique that's different. But he has to be, A, in a good place to recognize unique. He's got to be healed from his childhood wounds. And he obviously has to like you enough to want to invest to make you a priority. And I'm going to shoot a video um, next week about the it factor when a man is ready to settle down. The second strong sign he's serious about you, he tries to actively help you in his life or your life, excuse me. This is where teamwork is. So coming back to that member in our private group, by the way, there's a link below to join the private group called Midlife Love Mastery. He would have actively tried to help her with her daughter and trying to get a new car. That's what a man seri who's serious does when he cares about someone. And the third piece, and this is the most important piece coming back to that couple. Um, by the way, that couple in the show, longest um, third date ever, I told you it had a happy ending. 
Well, it turns out when they uh, got back to New York, where they lived, they, I shared this uh, briefly, is they dated briefly for a few months and then they moved in together. See, the third strong sign a man is serious about you is he integrates you into his life and he integrates himself into your life. And you're both integrating into each other's lives. See, our current dating process is years and years of dating, dating, and dating with very little integration. Now, for some people, it's difficult to do this in the early stages because I recognize you don't want to integrate your life with someone who's emotionally uh, constipated, who's emotionally unavailable, who's avoidant, who is is still hung up on their ex who has issues in his life. Well, this is why I said dating is a vetting process, but ultimately a strong sign that he's serious about you is the integration into each other's lives. That includes social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in your personal and your professional life, intimacy, is a big part of it, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to, like in this couple's case, moving in together or maybe getting married. See, we here in our midlife, we are dealing with a popular, by the way, midlife is after baby making years and before retirement. And look, ladies, I wish I could be there for you on a first date. I'd be like your big brother. I'd have the shotgun pointed out to the guy's face and saying, what's your intentions with my sister? See, a lot of men in midlife are absolutely gun shy. They are gun shy. They've gone through a contentious divorce. They've had some, they have tons of unresolved issues in their life. And they want that temporary companionship, that temporary connection, that temporary uh, sex with you. I mean, the occasional a companionship, occasional connection, occasional sex without any capacity to go deeper. You have to be your own detective because remember what I said earlier on in this video, dating is a vetting process and attraction and attachment can trump good judgment. And one of the things I've noticed with every woman who's gone through a breakup always says the same thing. I went against my, 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 um, I went against my better judgment. See, you have to pay attention to these things. And if nothing else, when an issue comes up is work on it in the, in the present versus hoping something will change in the future. Because guess what? Most people who are in a happy, healthy relationship, they didn't have problems. It integrated themselves just like I talked about here. It's those ones that are in drawn out, casual relationships that have the greatest frustration. And if you need some help and support with a relationship you're in, schedule a discovery call with me. That's my area of expertise to evaluate the relationship on your behalf to determine, is he serious about you? Or is this just a, gonna be one of those relationships where in the future, he's gonna be somebody I used to know. All right, is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please uh, let me know. Please post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. As always, if you find value in my content, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Join my group called Midlife Love Master or schedule a discovery call. And it's all in the links below.